Hi everybody, it's Keith. I'd like to walk you through how reflexive access list entries work. We don't use reflexive access list that much anymore, but they are very important to understand in the case you're being tested on it or you're in a CCA lab environment and they call on this task, you want to make sure you're familiar with it. So that's my purpose in actually creating this really short tutorial on it. So the goal of reflexive access list is to pay attention to traffic in this case, traffic that is sourced on the inside network that is going to the outside, like for example in this direction, and when the router sees traffic that goes from the inside to the outside to allow it to remember it and dynamically create entries in an access list right here so that the returning traffic can come back in. I mean, there's no, no real point in pinging from 10.001 to 333 if you can't get a response back. So the goal is that the inside network can initiate conversations to the outside and get responses, and at the same time, the outside cannot initiate connections to the inside. So that's what the goal is of this kind of semi-stateful filtering using reflexive access lists. Let's go ahead and pay attention to this router right here, R2. We're going to be focusing on FA01. We're going to create an access list outbound that's going to take a look at the traffic, remember it, build the dynamic entries that will be placed in the return access list inbound on F8.0 slash 1. That being said, let's jump on R2 and take a look at it. In fact, let me just jump there right now. We also want to verify that we have full connectivity to begin with. So on R1, let's just verify that we can actually ping 333. And let's also make sure we can tell net. Okay, so that part is good to go. So on R2, let's go ahead and exit out of there. And let's go ahead and create an access list on R2. We're going to call it outbound. And you'll take it as we create this, what you'll notice is that we're going to add an additional keyword to this access list. So here on R2, we'll simply go into configuration mode, create IP access list called outbound. We're going to permit TCP, and we're going to add the keyword reflect, and then I'm using the word mirror. Now, I could have used the word Bubba or any other name. I just happen to use mirror because that's what it's doing. And now we have two access lists. Check this out. If I do a show access list, you'll notice I've got the outbound access list that I just created, but I also have this access list called mirror. Now, this access list called mirror is going to have... Um, entries added to it dynamically as the this outbound access list sees traffic. Now the other thing we need to do is we need to create an access list that will identify traffic or filter traffic inbound also on FA0 slash 1. So let's go ahead and create that. So we'll go into configuration mode and we'll create that one next. So in this case I didn't want my routing protocols to die so I'm permitting OSPF because that's the routing protocol I'm using. If I didn't, by default, there's a deny all, and I would basically not have the ability to run routing protocols. So I've got two access lists that I've created and a third as a bonus called mirror. Now let's go ahead and apply those on interface FA0 slash 1, real simple. I'm just going to go to interface configuration mode and say IP access group inbound. I want to apply in on FA0 slash 1, and I want to apply IP access group outbound out and there's the application of it so now here's the magic if we go to R3 and we try to ping 1.1.1.1 it's not reachable that U is representing an unreachable message R2 is saying hey my access list killed it if we take a look at the access list on R2 it will verify that as well And I'll just go ahead and put that in. So here's access list inbound, and that is the uh, ping that was being denied. It's not letting it in. Now, the evaluate mirror is so cool because here's what's going to happen. If I send traffic from inside to out and it gets hit by this outbound access list, it's going to see that traffic. It's going to flip the image. For example, if 10.001 pings 3333, the reflect is going to see that and say, oh, I need to create this dynamic entry that says permit 3333 to 10.001. And then because I have the evaluate mirror command in the inbound access list, 
that entry will be dynamically created and the return traffic is allowed. It's almost too good to be true. Let's go ahead and take a look at it um, right here. We'll go down to R1 and let's do a ping to 3.3.3.3. Now this ping is sourced from the 10.0.0.1 IP address. So there's the ping. If we jump over on R2 and do a show access list again, take a look at this. We have this reflexive access list called mirror. It's got an entry that says permit ICMP from 3333 back to 10001. And because my inbound ACL specifically says evaluate mirror, which means please consider the um, the permissions in the access list called mirror as an entry in my access list is allowing that return traffic to come back in. We can also do a telnet. If I go over to R1 and do a telnet to 3333, and I got to put a little space there so it knows what I'm talking about. That works great. If we looked at the reflective access list, now check it out. I'm going to refresh this in just a moment. Right now we have one entry for ICMP. If we do the same command again, now we have an additional entry for TCP between those two IP address pairs. And that's how it works. So this is a not a poor man's way of doing stateful filtering, but it's actually an early, really old way of doing it. Today, to do that same functionality, we'd use context-based access control or we'd use zone-based firewalls. But as far as how reflexive access list works, that's a great tutorial in less than 10 minutes. Hope you enjoyed it and have a great, great day.